for the people of God to enter. Step out of the nest, spread your wings and soar, surrender. Fall to Jesus, fall fully in love. We are praying. Amen. Let's celebrate God, everybody. Hallelujah. Okay. Please greet your neighbor warmly before you take your seat. Tell them you are happy to see them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Let me beg your neighbor to wake up. Hallelujah. <laughs> just wake up. Aha. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Tell all of them to just, everybody there to come in. Hallelujah. Okay. We're going to continue. Uh, there was a teaching we started about, um, was it four weeks ago or three weeks ago? I can't remember exactly when. Uh, that before the anniversary. Three weeks ago, when we did uh, Walking in the um, Glory, right? And uh, we started talking about definitions of glory. Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just continue with that quickly and we trust God uh, to make some good uh, progress. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to the book of First Peter. First Peter. Yeah, just leave one door open yeah, so that those who are coming can see coming. As they come in, they can sit on this side. Yeah, they can sit all over here. No problem. They won't disturb me. I make up my mind to accommodate them. Okay, First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, verse 8. We talk about walking in glory, hallelujah. And uh, we're going to be defining the glory, what glory means this morning. We want to talk about walking in glory. Okay, First Peter chapter 5, from verse 8. It says what? Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Go on. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Hallelujah. All this morning, you are going through something and you are crying alone by yourself. Oh, Lord, why me? It's only special to me. It's not special to you. The same suffering is experienced by your brotherhood in the world. You are not the only one that is broke, you are not the only one that is not employed. You are, not, no, you are not the only one that is cutting. Uh, in fact, if you are broke, thank God you are not owing. There are people that are broke and they are owing. So there is no, so there is nothing special about your problem. Hallelujah. The same sufferings are being expressed, are being experienced by your brotherhood that is in the world. Hallelujah. Look at the next line. It says, but may the God of all grace, who called you to what? Eternal glory. What are you called into? His eternal So it may not appear as if you are enjoying anything. He said, What he has called you to is what? His eternal glory. Who has called you to his eternal glory? By Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and set to you. Say amen to that. Tell your neighbor, you have been called to God's eternal glory. Hallelujah. How long will the glory endure for? Has it called you to a temporary glory? It's good for a Christian to have this mentality. It's good for a Christian to have this mentality. A lot of people don't, they will think because they don't have money or something's not happening for them, they don't know that they, are, they have the glory of God in their life. And look at how He called you. The Bible says, Who has called you what, to His eternal glory by what? By Christ Jesus. Has He called you to eternal glory by your education? 
Has it called you to, 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 to glory by your degree? No. By your money? By your career? By your own holiness? Our access to glory is Christ Jesus. And that conforms with Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Christ in you is the hope of glory. So we are called to glory by who? By Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let that sink into you. Let that sink very well into your spirit. Touch yourself. Say, I am a man man. walking in glory glory. Because because of Jesus. Called into glory. Your family may not respect you, but you are a man called to glory. Your colleagues may not respect you, but you are a man called to glory. Your boss may not respect you, but you are a man called to glory. Are you hearing me? Pastor T may not even recognize you, but you are a man called to glory. You are not called to glory by a pastor. You are called to glory by Christ Jesus. He paid the price for that. Say amen to that. Because all of, some of you, all he has to do to spoil your mood for the week is for somebody to criticize something about you. Just say one thing about you. Look at your nose. It's not even pointed. It's flat. Which is normal for African nose. If your nose is pointed, we need to suspect where you came from. We need to ask your mom, who is your dad? Who is your dad? Your nose should be flat. Oh, your nose is pointed because of the weather. Because they need to be to, if you are going to breathe in snow, it must be streamlined. <laughs> Our nose is not pointed. Our nose is very brief. Let's go. Not to have this kind of Oyibo nose that's like this. Because half of Oyibo pulls face is nose. Okay, let's go. And, 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 look, you guys are making me to talk. What? Look, I, came, I came here for a serious uh, I came here for a serious business today. <laughs> Praise God. Only has for someone to just say something about you. Your wig is not right. Your makeup is not something. You fall apart. No, 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 no. We are not called to glory by what they say. We are not called to glory by the way our pocket looks. If they commend you, be happy. If they don't commend you, it doesn't mean nothing. We have been called to glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So if we have been called to glory by Christ Jesus, what is glory? What do we expect? That's what led to us defining what glory is all about. And I said, number one definition of glory. Let me go over it again. If I even go over it again, don't worry. Here, we, don't, we are not in a hurry. Yeah. We teach you the point of understanding. Yes, so I will go over it again. Yeah. May probably add one or two more points. And then we are through for this morning. Glory be to God. Yeah. We said, number one definition of glory is the full manifestation of the goodness of God. And I pray for you that may the goodness of God manifest in your life. May the goodness of God manifest in your life. I say for the third time, may the goodness of God manifest in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, my brothers and my sisters, the glory is not abstract. It can be seen. Sometimes it's even describable. Nothing about God is abstract. His power is real. His spirit is real. Are you hearing me? Heaven is more real than the earth. Spirit realm is more real. It's not abstract. Simply because you have not been there doesn't mean it's not real. You don't see oxygen. You don't see MTN signal. But when you call MTN, you will know. You don't have to see the signal. Glory be to God forevermore. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I have a very big God. And he is always with me. You may not see him, but it is real. Hallelujah. It's very real. Hallelujah. 
those who have had near death experiences or those who died and came back, they will tell you that as soon as they cross over, they came more alive. They became more alive. Don't you forget the way we are living here. We are not really alive like that, though. I'm, no, it's because, you have, it's because your mind is used to this realm. Yeah, if I talk for how many hours now, by the time we get upstairs, I'm talking, sometimes I'm coughing. You're tired. You think we are really alive like that? I got upstairs this morning because I've been up since. Because when you are coming to preach, you know your mind is on what you are going to say, all those things. You don't really sleep Saturday night. Any pastor that sleeps well on Saturday night, I doubt whether it's cold. It doesn't live well. So, this is it. I got upstairs. This, I just brought jail on them. I said, I just did like this. They thought I was praying. I was not praying. You know what I was saying? I said, God, just strengthen me. I was just tired. We are not really alive. Here. Yeah, when you get to that place, hi, yeah, yeah. The Bible say, you will see him as he is. And if God will see him as he is, we shall become like him. Do you, do you know why we need to sleep here? So that we can recharge. Here, here they don't sleep. Because the fullness of life is there. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to know whether you are really alive, that you are doing the, the way you are deceiving yourself, go and check your picture 20 years ago. And check your picture now. You will see that something is not right. You are not going up, you are going down. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? So, this place, it may look real to you, but it's not so real. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says this word will eventually be melted. Everything will melt. Melt. The Bible says there is a new heaven and a new earth. This building will melt. I don't know, it could be with 1,200 because it's after the millennium. Then when the new earth is about to start, everything will melt. The Bible says it will roll away on that tremendous heat, like somebody folded clothes. Fiam. Then the real one will now come. Glory be to God forever, man. Please, I beg all of you, labor not for me that perish. You are too worried about, about things that one can't. It's either the things outlast you or you outlast them. <laughs> one way or the other, one will leave the other. If they don't leave you, you will leave them. Glory be to God forevermore. So tell your number, say, play cool temper, cool temper. For me, cool temper. All of you, cool temper. You are too worried. It's either they will leave you or they will leave them. So cool temper. That's the place we are going. Yes, sir. I can't see anybody who is traveling to Joss. Then you get to somewhere like after Akwanga, then you down park your car, you say you have arrived. You now begin to set up building. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're coming half AC, but you don't sleep inside. Mm, right. We are going somewhere. Yeah. We are pilgrims. We are travelers. Yeah. Glory be to God forever, man. Yeah. What with that mentality? Don't let anything frustrate you. Yeah. Don't right. let frustrate you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Whew. Hallelujah. Exodus 33. Exodus, I said, let me just quickly read. I pray I'm able to add one more point or two more points today. Exodus 3 from verse 17. Who's there? Exodus 3 from verse 17. Okay. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by next one. That's when he was asking God to, uh, that his presence should go with him. Look at the next line. And he said, please show me what your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before. What did he ask? Show me what? Your glory. Did he say, I will show you my light? I will show you my fire? If you want to see my glory, I will allow my goodness to pass before you. That means what you call glory is my goodness. Uh, are you here? Remember, let, let me pray for you this morning. May the goodness of God. Are you hearing me? May the goodness of God be evident. In your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please. Uh, let, me, let, 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 me, let me show you let, let me show you something from the scriptures. Uh, you know, it says something. It says, I will make my glory. What? 
or by my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Be seated, everybody. Guys, if you don't understand how life runs, you will run and run and run and not catch anything. You will put yourself under a jump. Are you hearing me? Glory be to God forevermore. There are some things that are, are, they are product of grace. Some things are product of faith. Is it that one that's a product of grace? It has nothing to do with you. It is given before you are born. Because if you have to do anything to deserve it, it's no longer grace. So like I was discussing with Brother Jay today, you know, we we're just making fun. I said, Pastor, you didn't go to Chilo. I said, Ah, no, me, there's a way me, I tell my own Chilo. You know, I can follow, like I can do so many things. I said, If you follow those people called Bishop Oyedepo, you will think that God is not working in your life. <laughs> You will think that God is not working in your life. Yeah. Yeah. I said, Bishop has 24 hours a day. Mm. I'm not criticizing him. I'm not criticizing him in any way. God forbid. Yeah. I'm just telling you some things are product of grace. Yeah. It's not because he's working harder than anybody. Mm-hmm. It's not because he's praying harder than anybody. Mm-hmm. By the time we get to heaven and we're looking at everybody's book, you will see that that is what is really concerning him. Yeah. In a generation, God will pick a few. Daosa will pick them in the, gener- in the generation. Christo uh, Yakilome. He will just pick them in the generation. If you like, eh, go and pray what they are praying. You will die in the process. You will not get anything. He said, in the volume of the book, it is written concerning me. It's not because they pray, not because they fast pass. That's pidgin English. Maybe me fast pass. <laughs> No, it's a product of grace. He said, no, I read and I, come and I lay hold on it and I saw it. Even the reading, is God that working you to read. Because other people read the same thing you read, they didn't see anything. <laughs> I don't know how this thing work. You know why? Because a man can have nothing. I said, it is given from above. But there's a general level of faith. Glory be to God forevermore. He said, I will make my goodness pass before you. Listen to what he told him. He didn't, say, he didn't tell Moses, I will give you my goodness. I will only make it pass. What was passing for Moses, Jesus brought to us. Hallelujah! Because Jesus is the full manifestation of the goodness of God. Bible called Jesus the express image of God. How he went about doing good. So, do you understand right now? Acts chapter 10 verse 38. He went about doing good. So, what passed in front of Moses, God, Jesus brought it to us. Lift up your two hands, everybody. Lift up, you say, because of Jesus. The fullness of the goodness of God is manifest. Him alive. Hallelujah. Do you get what I say right now? What he made to pass before Moses, Jesus brought it. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Do you get what we are saying right now? So the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives has made the difference. We are not our aspiration is not to be like Moses. It's to be like Jesus Christ. That is was why when they were that man thing, yes, and Elijah appeared, Moses appeared, and hey, uh, Mo, uh, what was his name? Peter was so old. Ah, I said it's good to build, build three tents here. One for Moses, one for Elijah, one for you. Bible says a voice came. He said, "This is my beloved son. Hear him." He said, "In this new, new dispensation, Moses will not be relevant. Elijah will not be needed. This is the person." Because if God didn't correct that at that moment, they will put them on the same level. Three tenths. Only one tenth. Jesus Christ. Say amen to that. Kai, I'm not making progress. I'm just reviewing the number number one point. But you are are okay? Hallelujah. 
the goodness of God is not passing before me. The goodness of God is with me. Because it's not every the way they pass. Now you do enjoy. Are you hearing it? Have you been to a party before that they are serving food? Especially those stupid parties that they are serving their friends. You sit there, they are bringing food. They will just pass you. And <laughs> they are give their friend. No, from today, no goodness will pass you again. Do you hear what I'm saying right now? I repeat again. From today, no goodness will pass you again. Because of Jesus, you lay on your experience and you walk in it in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, good things happen to those who believe. I believe Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Amen. Do you notice something in the Bible? Kai. Hallelujah. Do you notice something? That throughout the ministry of Moses, nobody was healed. Directly by him. When that water became bitter, are you hearing me? And the Bible said they were, were drinking and it was poisoning them, right? Yes. What, did they, what, what, what did God, told, God said, cut a branch, a tree, and throw it aside. The water will be healed. The cross of Jesus Christ now. Yes. The tree yes. is the healing. Yes, Even then, it was Jesus that brought the healing to them. Yes, it was in Moses. Mm. And in case you want to go further, yes, when they were being beaten by a snake and they were dying, he oh. said, said, lift up that cross. Yes. Aha! Are you hearing me? He said, as this snake was lifted, so shall the Son of Man be lifted. That whoever looks should not perish. But have everything. So Jesus was still the one healing. Yeah. Bible says, in the, in, uh, on that journey, he said they were drinking, were eating free food, Abby, and drinking water, banana, and drinking water. He said, Moses gave you manna, you died. He said, this is the real yeah. bread. And Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, chapter 10, Bible said the rock, the rock that was following them, where they were drinking water every day, Bible said that rock was Christ. So both the food and the water is the Christ. Do you get what we are trying to say right now? So what was even passing? Are you hearing me? That so that they will enjoy, so that you will continue passing was still Christ. Christ in your life. May he make the difference. Is somebody hearing me right now? So when we see, a, how can you, eh? How can you? You see a brother, a, a brother, and you despise him. Somebody that has Christ in him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't know what you carry. Christ in you, and the man will look down on you and say nothing will come out of your life. It is not possible. Their assessment of you has been wrong. It is still wrong. It will continue to be wrong. But you know what? But don't let the assessment of yourself by yourself be wrong. You know why? Christ is in you. Do you get what I'm trying to say right now? Show me your glory. I will allow my goodness to pass before you. How God anointed you on Nazareth. With Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good? What was passing is what is happening in your life now. We refuse to allow it to pass anymore. We trap every goodness of God. We attract every goodness of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Some of you who are just looking for a job. Let me tell you, January will not end. Is somebody hearing me? January 2023 will not end. Before your good news comes. I don't know who that is for. But in the mighty name of Jesus. As long as you don't talk like your friends. And you don't expect like your friend. And you set your expectations high. And you trust God. The goodness of God will show up in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody hear what I'm saying right now. That's how these things work. Just recognize it. It's the goodness of God passing. Hallelujah. Amen. We said number two. Let's let's even if we do only review today. <laughs> number two. We said glory is the total sum of what Christ paid for, died and paid for. 
the total sum. Everything that the death of Christ brought is in the glory. Hallelujah. Total sum. Not partial, total. Sum of everything that Christ paid for. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your broke days are over forever. You know, one day, <laughs> I told you, please sit down, please sit down. You know, one day I told you an experience. I had, I was going to the UK and I was in the, um, I was, I was in BA. He leaves Abuja in the morning, so I remember very well. So I sat in the economy and we were going to go. Then all of a sudden they came in. The, what they call those hostess, they came, uh, they came to my seat. Oh, sir, are you Mr. Tunde Ayane? I said, yes. Say, follow me. So I was thinking, what have I done? Like? <laughs> Follow you for what now? So, but of course, being a gentleman, <laughs> or pretending to be a gentleman, I followed him. I followed her. She took me straight to business class. He said, you have been upgraded. Ah, I said, this is good. Oh, I carry my bag. Oh, I was waiting to those people in the economy. I don't leave you. Hey, I don't go. I'm no more there. I don't go. I don't go. I don't go. Bye bye. So I went. When I got there, I met a girl there. That girl probably 15, 16. Maybe no. She be okay, 15, no, be older than she be like maybe 17, 18, you know, that kind of small girl. A mini was here. Yeah. So what? Doing gum. He will go pow. <laughs> she, then she will, she will blow it like a whoo pow. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. She not she not send anybody. Hello, we will go pow. Ah. He was just doing a thing. I knew there was no way the girl could have worked. Even started working with the day she was born. She wouldn't have afford money to pay for business class. Somebody suffered. And paid for it. I may not like her. I may not like her behavior. But that's what I can do about it. As he did there, and I saw me too, I did there. You face your business. Is somebody hearing me? Christ has paid for it. Somebody may not like your God. They may not like the way you are. Yes, but Jesus has paid for oh, it. Yes. Is somebody hearing me right now? Yeah. First Peter chapter 5, chapter 1. Let me start from verse chapter 1. Verse 11. First Peter 1, 11. Some of you are too apologetic with your lifestyle. Yeah. You are too apologetic. I don't want them to get angry. Let me ask you, when, they, when you are pleasing them, what did they do to you? They are too apologetic. You don't want to pray in tongues. You don't want to do anything. You don't want them to be offended. Why? Lake, one day, Lake and I were gisting. You know, we always gist. Funny, funny gist. I said, let's say I begin to do bad things. Hmm? Let's say I begin to drink beer and we carry guests. We're just drinking beer and we guess. We're just playing. Doing terrible things. I said, because of some things I've known. If the girl mistakenly gist about some things that come, I said, the way I will slap her, I won't say we are committing sin together. Let's say, just say something derogatory about Jesus. I'll just carry the bottle of beer. I say, please, we may be drinking beer, but there is a power of God. There are some things we have touched and you dare not make mockery of it. Are you hearing me? We may not live like our conviction, but what we have touched, we cannot deny. Are you hearing me? What we have seen, we cannot deny. What we have experienced, we cannot deny. 
Is somebody here at the yeah. Don't say because we are drinking beer, bottle is half line here. If you say anything against Jesus, drink beer. Talk against Buhari. Talk against uh, uh, Tunubu. I love that. But if you talk against Jesus, I said those, 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 those pastors, those everything, the way bottle will reach your head, you will not like it. And I'll pretend I'm drunk and I will deliberately break your head because some things we have seen. The power of God we have witnessed. The goodness of God that we have seen. The Holy Spirit that we have interacted with. You will not want to say this. You will not want to despise the Holy Spirit that we have touched. Let us separate man from God. Let God be true. Let all men be one liars. Don't use my lifestyle to insult God. My lifestyle does not validate God. He was God before we were born. He is God. And after we are gone, he is still God. Let us celebrate. Let, 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 us, let us separate that. Somebody backslide. You backslide, you say, because you saw your pastor drinking beer. You are crazy. You don't know this is where you receive. Somebody you drive on the, street, on the street every day because you saw accident. Why don't you throw your own car away? Say, I saw, I saw one accident there. No, no, I, don't, I can't drive my car. Not throw your car away. So because somebody is mis- misbehaving, why are you throwing your Christ away? People look for excuse to do stupid things. Just an excuse. Wow. My time would have been two minutes. Two. <laughs> okay, that's four. Two, two. <laughs> so it would have been four minutes. <laughs> so that's eight. <laughs> oh, God. Praise God. I said what? First Peter chapter one. Verse 11. Go back to verse 10. Sorry, I always do that. Go back to verse 10. Let me, we, we have my, let me break record. Let me wear my suit to the end today. Because I want to, because I, now I've not started teaching. That's why the, the, I still left the book. If I started teaching, when I came to teach today, I would remove the bed. I just fell and revealed. That's why this jacket is still on. But uh, it's fine. Uh, it's a, uh, thank you. So let me pose for you. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let's go. <laughs> You know, it's good to be able to do shakara, but you do it, you do it quietly. Not that you are doing shakara, you now be doing your hand like this. You, know? you don't really. Just be decent. And so the people will just say, Kai, that boy is very quiet, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, just like that. Yeah, anyway, that's what you do. Not that you, you walk something, you are looking at people, look at people and say, Can't you see me? They cannot see you. That's why you frustrate yourself. You wear something expensive, and then nobody says it's nice. Then you go home angry. <laughs> Thank you. I land here hundred percent. Let's go. <laughs> of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and search what carefully. Who prophesied of the grace that will come to you? Hallelujah. They prophesied it. They talked about it. It was Isaiah that said, "I will create in them a new heart." It was Isaiah that said, "Their iniquity and sins I will remember no more." Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? They talked about it. Jeremiah was one that said, I've, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Yeah. Talking about the love of Christ. We shall separate from the love of Christ. They prophesied about it. They talk about it. But they don't understand the fullness of what they are talking about. Who are this generation? Because their own generation, when they commit sin, God will cut their head. But this one that they said, God said, I've loved them with everlasting love. Who are they? Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder. Who are they talking about? Which generation is this? That he bore their iniquity. And some of our peace was laid upon him. By his stripes we are hid. Who is he talking about? They searched this salvation, this grace. They searched it. Verse 11. Verse 11. Okay. Searching. What? Or what manner or what of time? The spirit of Christ, who was in them, was indicating. When what? He testified beforehand. What? About what the sufferings of Christ and the glories that will follow. What brought about the glories? The suffering of Christ. 
He has paid the price. He has suffered. Glory has followed. Healing has come. Righteousness has come. Prosperity has come. The peace of God that passes all understanding has come. Forgiveness has come. Favor with God has come. Is somebody hearing me right now? Acceptance in the beloved has what? Has come. Because of the sufferings of Christ. Do you get what I say right now? A lot of people are still trying to make themselves acceptable. Like I said on the last time. Still trying to suffer. So you become acceptable. Let me tell you something. Hmm? I should be able to say this without fear. Because I am the pastor here. I should be, because if I go to my friend's church, I will not say because some of them I know their perspective. So I will not talk. Like, but let me say it to you. Hmm? When it comes to New Testament, they are still recommended fasting. Should I say it again? Yes. When it comes to New Testament, New Testament. <laughs> when it comes to New Testament, they are still recommended fasting. Jesus did not recommend it. Paul did not recommend it. Peter did not recommend it. They did it. They didn't recommend it. Meaning, as they were led by the Spirit to do it, you should be led by the Spirit to do your own. You see the way you are looking now? Because you are not well taught. If you can show me one scripture in the Bible, in the New Testament, that I recommend fasting, I will give you money. He only says, when you fast. Okay, let me ask you. Okay, when do you fast? April? Lent period? May, June, July? When you fast is when you are led. He only gives us guidelines of what to do when we are fasting. Don't do it. Show it to everybody. Hey, yeah, ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Uh, it's throwing me your balance. By nine o'clock, you are so bad, you are, you are so nasty. She didn't come to collect. Oh! What money are you collecting here? What kind of fasting is that one? It gave you guideline. Wash your face. Don't appear to men to fast. So that what, your, 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 your father that says it in the secret with what do you want? Openly. It gave you guideline. It didn't tell you how and when. It didn't, it didn't recommend three days. It didn't recommend seven days. He did not recommend anything. That one you will decide by yourself as you are led by the Spirit. The only exception to that is that probably the person you are under spiritually and stop all this nonsense that you are putting your head every, everywhere. You come to a church like this, you now have another person who is your mentor. I ask like something. You are very stupid. Both you are your mentor. Who is you mentoring? Who is you? What do you know about life? No, 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 I'm looking at you. When the blind is leading the blind, you say you are mentally, mentally who? No, no, let's be realistic. Simply because a man is able to put himself together more than you put yourself together, you assume that he's wiser than you. Simply because a lady is able to package herself well, you assume that she knows more than you. Only God knows the heart of men. Stop falling for cheap packaging. Anyway, shall let me because you judge too much a book by its cover. Let me. I'm talking too much this morning, Abby. I'm just talking about the suffering of Christ. That's what paid the price for everything that we enjoy. Hallelujah. Amen. And then let me tell you something about about mentoring that will help you. If somebody is not older than you by a minimum of 10, 15 years, you don't have any business being mentored by them. Anointing and wisdom, they are different. Yes. They may be anointed, but being anointed does not make up for time. What kind of stupidity is that? When you talk to him, what you will learn in one hour, you cannot learn it with an anointed man in two weeks. What will he tell you? He has seen some fix, some few people healed. He has seen some great manifestation of God. That is God dealing with him. What about life? What about life? A man who has not raised any child is talking to you about raising children. 
Are you okay? People have not worked in corporate world. Who have not done anything. There are, no, nobody has ever betrayed you before in life. You thought you lied wisdom. What have you learned? <laughs> Look, guys. Anyway, shall let me just keep quiet this morning. Trying to talk to some of you, you just say, No, 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 that's my mentor. That's my mentor. Mentor who? <laughs> People that talk to you, you'll be drinking your beer together and be happy. What is mentor? You too, you are passionate, you are a mentor. What do you mentor? Because you read some books on uh, motivation. <laughs> you should got to be, to, to, to be happy. Have you heard this kind of thing you read? You know, they are starting to call impossible. They are starting to call impossible. In fact, instead of saying impossible, say, I am possible because the word him is I am. Just, just put hyphen there, say, I am possible. I am Possible. That's the meaning of impossible. And you say, and you say that is a motivation. You say, that is scripture. When you enter God, you will know that some things are impossible. <laughs> That's why the Bible says the things that are impossible with men, they are possible with God. So how can men now come say it's not it doesn't mean it's not possible? I, I, it's, I am possible. When you confront something, you will know that you are impossible. <laughs> there are some things that are impossible with what? With men. We don't finish today, cool. First Peter chapter 5, verse 1. <laughs> let's close, let's close, let's go up. Let's close. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verse number 1. Hallelujah. The elders who are among you I exhort. Because me too, I am a fellow elder. And a what? A witness of the sufferings of Christ. And also a partaker of the glory that will be what revealed. Do you see the concept of scripture? The suffering of Christ and the glory. The suffering of Christ and what? And the glory. As Christ has suffered, may you partake of the glory. Amen. That amen is very weak. Amen. As Christ has suffered, may you partake of the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to me, Fumi. The future will be good. Amen. Are you hearing me? Listen to me again. May you hear me. All of you hear me. Let me they hear me. Can you hear me, ma? Mrs. Zimbaya, hear me very well. Are you hearing me? Mrs. Kuka, hear me. Mommy, hear me. The future will be very good. Amen. Are you guys hearing me this morning? The future will be very what? When we look at the suffering of Christ, there is a glory that will be revealed. All you need to believe God that, Father, I will not die before my glory comes. I will be a partaker of that glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you, you will not die. Your children will not die. Amen. Your husband will not die. Amen. You will not die. Amen. To partake Amen. of the glory Amen. that will be revealed. Amen. Because of the suffering of Christ. You know what, you know what Peter was saying here? In that time, I stood and I spoke for 30 minutes. And 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. At that time, I am partaking of the glory. It wasn't me that was speaking that time. The glory was on me. That time, I was walking on the street, and my image was healing people. It wasn't me. I am partaking of the glory. Because Christ has suffered. That time, I went to a country, remember the city, and they brought a lady by the name Dockers who was dead. And I prayed for her, and she rose from the dead. I was partaking of the glory. Because Christ has paid the price. I pray for you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody under the sound of my voice will partake of the glory of God. In every dimension. In every area. In signs and wonders. In healings. In prosperity. In victory. In every area of your life. Somebody will partake of the glory in the name of Jesus. We are not afraid of the
the future. Yes, it will be glorious. Amen. It will be beautiful. Amen. Christ has paid the price. Amen. Even where we have made mistakes, it will help us. Amen. Where we are not praying enough, it will help us. Amen. Where we have taken wrong step, it will help us. Amen. Because, the, the, because the foundation is still, is still, is still the same. Amen. Christ has paid the price. Do you get what I'm trying to teach this morning now? Leave this place with this confidence. You are a candidate for the manifestation of his glory. Because of what Christ has done. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because of what Christ has done. You are a candidate for that glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody hearing me today right now? Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The sufferings of Christ. He said, I also, I am a witness of the suffering. I was there when he was being punished. I was there. And also a partaker of the the glory. Can I just round up? Because when I begin to now begin to talk about how to express the glory, how to really enjoy it, you will understand what he was saying. I'm not going to that today. But I want to pray for you this morning. That every suffering you have gone through in your personal life will not be in vain. Is somebody hearing me? I say over you, I speak about your life, that every suffering that you have gone through in your personal life will not be in vain. Something outstanding. Something unusual will come out of your suffering. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. This thing we are going through is not in vain. Uh, don't forget where we read when I started uh, about the suffering we are going through. You know, resistance. You know, I said after you are suffering, why? It will, the Lord has called you to glory. When I come to that, I will teach you more about that. Amen. Father, we give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, Lord. Amen. Thank you for the supply of your spirit. You, we are so grateful to you. Amen. We cannot thank you enough. Amen. You have done us good. Amen. You have shown us mercy. Amen. Thank you for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Manifested in our lives. Amen. As we enter the last month of this year, miracles, Amen. glories, Amen. divine supplies, Amen. all the way Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. May wonderful things happen in your life Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be your name, Father. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Are you happy you came to church this morning? Amen. Glory to God. Step out of the nest, spread your wings and soar, surrender. At Pignosis, concise knowledge.